Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles show in West Hollywood. I'm here with John and Martin with their movie, The Clompus. Let's take a look at the clip. You have 17 new voice messages. Jared! Randy here. Give me a call back when you get the chance. Later. Jared! Jiggy Jerry, Jiggy 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 Jerry, what's up, dog? Yeah, how you doing? Give me a call back, dog. Jerry, so uh, you know how I'm strapped for cash lately. Um, uh, got something tasty to brewing. Talk soon. Jerry. Uh, guys, congratulations on your film. You people thoroughly enjoyed it last night, and uh, I can't believe the journey took us on in five minutes. Uh, but if anyone hasn't seen it, let's tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Uh, so Jerry comes home from a business trip uh, to an answering machine full of messages. It's set in 1994, um, and he sort of gets wrapped up in a through a series of increasingly ridiculous and hilarious messages. He gets wrapped up in a bank robbery from his uh, pretty pretty dopey friend, and <laughs> um, it takes him on a, on a little bit of a ride that he wasn't expecting. I, I, it, it was brilliant. I mean, honestly, to have a, a film that was kind of like, you know, again, all through voicemails, which, you know, seems to be so, you know, landline voicemails seem such a long time ago, which it was in 1994. But it was such an incredible journey because you really followed through on this journey that was going on. And you took us really into that kind of reality as well of, of that period of time as well, which was amazing. Um, where did the inspiration come for you guys in creating this particular film? Well, we had done a, uh, a web series together, mm -hmm. uh, the two directors, John Hogue and John F. Beach, and uh, we were looking for an editor to put that together, and Dustin Hahn uh, edited that web series together, and uh, he had pitched uh, this script to John Beach and mm -hmm. said, hey, my brother and I wrote this, uh, maybe, you know, maybe you want to make this, yeah. and he was floored by it and was like, how do we get this done? and eventually pieced the two of us on board, and uh, I took it to Evan Peters and pitched it to him, and he was really excited about it, and we said, like, thanks for thinking of me, which is funny in itself, because, yeah. like, he's just an awesome guy, and he yeah. absolutely just destroyed this part, and really, you know, making that answering machine as the other character, him, like, he really brought it to life. I mean, really, I mean, it was, it was quite amazing because you, you got a series of these voicemails which is delivered so, so wonderfully and then all of a sudden you've got Evan Peters just pops out of nowhere and he was <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Um, did, you have, did you have any challenges? Because, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned at the, at the screen there was a few challenges that you had in, in kind of making it. As you do independent filmmaking, was there any challenges that you had? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the biggest challenges that we did have was we we shot everything and then as we were putting it together and editing we we realized that the the answering machine was a second character yeah. and when we got into putting it together uh we realized we needed more answering machine shots and from different angles to make the cut work and really sort of like give it that life that it needed so we did have to go back and shoot a few answering machine uh inserts to, mm -hmm. to fill in the blanks and then we also did sort of make some of the the neighbors angry on a nice sunny after <laughs> afternoon yeah. in uh, in october uh, by yelling and screaming in their, you know, right in their, their faces, so. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm sure they got over it now. Send them a copy of the film, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but it, it, in this particular case, though, like, editing is extremely important because you really want to make it snappy and get right to the point. And obviously, you know, as you say, your second character was an answer machine, which is brilliant. <laughs> it's actually brilliant. Um, I mean, you guys obviously have a great team together. How did you guys kind of all come to find each other? Well, we've been friends for a while, and I think, like, number one for me is just, like, enjoying the people you work with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you, if you have a set and a group of people that you don't really want to be around, usually the product isn't that great. Yeah. Uh, so I think that translates well, and, like, we just, we like hanging out, we like making things together, and so we just keep doing that, so. That's what it's all about, isn't it? When you find your team together and you just, and you, you make greatness, it's, it's beautiful. What, what does it, what does it feel like, you know, you put the, create this film, and then, you know, you Obviously, the hope is is that it goes out there and gets seen by a wide audience. But what is that feeling like at New Filmmakers LA to have a, an audience see it and for people to watch it and be amused and, and enjoy it and a new audience as well? Because many people just sit there and watch it on their laptops right into the point and then it's in front of an audience. What is that feeling like? 
Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, that's that is why you make films. I think it's it's great to show films to your friends uh, in your living room, but seeing it in a theater with a crowd and getting the reactions that you were trying to elicit from people is 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 fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. it's invigorating. That's that's all the reward you know you need. Um, mm -hmm. I love it. It's great. It's great to great to make a film and, and have people enjoy it. Well, I think obviously now this was set in in 1994. Um, you know, which scarily is quite a long time ago now, but I think I was alive still. But the point is, how do you, how do you go about creating a, was there certain things you wanted to have in the set to kind of give the atmosphere? I mean, certainly I believed it, but was there certain aspects of when you were trying to design the kind of set that you were trying to create? Yeah, our, our production designer, Susie Mancini, is awesome. And she went to Universal and rented a bunch of stuff, brought some of her own stuff from Thank her apartment. Thank you, Universal. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that place is awesome if you've never been. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, They're it's... our sponsor. We love Universal. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. Nice plug. <laughs> yeah, it's really like a dreamland of decorations. It's like anything you could ever want to make mm -hmm. a set look any genre or decade. Mm -hmm. So she really knocked it out of the park and just took... This apartment, which is actually our writers, Dustin Hahn and mm. Greg Hahn, lives in the same building. His brother, the other oh, writer. How convenient! There you go. Yeah, so we had Make like Greg Hahn's uh, apartment as the green room and mm. makeup and hair, and then mm. we had Dustin's as the set, and we just cleared it out and mm. turned it into uh, yeah, this 1994 Wonderland. It was a 1994 <laughs> Wonderland. That's the only way to put it. I love it, and it, it does make things easier a little bit when you've got one lo one location. That know? certainly makes it easier. Yeah, and yeah. and we were really lucky to have. Dustin's apartment because it was sort of decorated in that style, you mm -hmm. know, and it hadn't been renovated. So we we went in there and we were like, well, I think we can use this place. Yeah, you so know, basically you didn't do as long, you didn't to change anything. It was well, <laughs> some of those big features. There's like big, big rocks in the walls that that sort of were more in fashion then than they are now, mm -hmm. and you're like, that clicks. If we take out the the Xbox and re replace yeah. it with a Nintendo, all of a sudden it becomes 1994. You know, so yeah. And I think, I think the whole time uh, Dustin was a little nervous because we had like dolly tracks in and out of there. We had curved dolly tracks which barely fit around corners. Like mm -hmm. we really used that place. And mm -hmm. I think like as a writer, you're already nervous and he helped, you know, as co-producer as well. And, and I think there was, there was a, lot, a lot of moving parts, but mm -hmm. it all came together when we shot in there twice. So. Wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good location. What is next for you both together or individually? Uh, well, we just actually, actually wrapped up a... Uh, a little short film called You're Spoiled. We don't really know what the plan is with it yet. Uh, it's sort of a, a joke. It doesn't have sort of the the breath that uh, The Accomplice does. Uh -huh. So it, that'd probably be something more web-based. Uh, John Beach and I work on directing music videos with Martin, uh, Martin producing. Oh, wonderful. Um, so we're continually writing and, and trying to make new new projects. Well, you got you got a great team together. Um, you know, having made The Accomplice was brilliant. Uh, what, what, do you have any... Um, because you know, again, taking your ideas and actually putting it out there and, and making a film—it's it's, you know—it's a big, it's a big, it's a transition you have to go through. And then all of a sudden, when you've made the film, it's, it's a great achievement. What advice do you give to any filmmaker out there, and if they want to go make, say, their first film? I would say, first and foremost, make your film. You know, yeah. that, I think the the worst thing is paralysis by analysis. I, mm -hmm. I hear that term a lot, and. Um, and sort of just get out there and do it. Don't be afraid to not make the film because you don't have the best camera in the world. You know, mm -hmm. shoot it on your iPhone if you need to. Just yeah. get started. Do it. It can only get better. So you know, there's no, there's no harm, and the only harm is not starting. I think. You know? Fantastic. I like that. Very yeah. good. And very good. Uh, I'm producing a uh, feature-length documentary film right now, which is my Fantastic. first time in the documentary world. Awesome. And I, I think, yeah, just to go along with that, like I'm learning by doing. You know, mm -hmm. just like get out there and do it. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody really knows what they're doing. They kind of like figure don't it out. Know what we're doing. <laughs> so, I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> and if they do, it's just because they've done it a lot. Yeah. You know, so it's just like keep yourself active with that because that's, that's so what's important. true. Yeah. yeah, that's it's so true because it it is true until you go and actually get out there and do it, and you know, and then it's that fear factor of like, can I make it happen? Can I do it? But you're doing it, and you're doing yeah. it very successfully, and congratulations to you both, and the TED Talk comes very soon, I'm sure. Uh, no, really right well from the done. bed, yeah. Right from the bed, yeah, yeah, there's a bed over there. Um, yeah, no, thank you both very, very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing much more of your, of your work, so congratulations. Thank you very thank much. You.